Hi, Jason here with uh, Concert Grind. And uh, we're looking at the main page today and the settings that we have. So the first thing that you see is over top the name of the instrument, Concert Grand LE in this case. It's running off a solid state drive of my Mac Pro. And uh, right now with the presets, you can see that if you click on these, you can select any of the presets. The secret to getting the reverb to work is to first select a preset before you get into the reverb. And uh, the next setting down here is show microphones. This shows all of the different microphone perspectives. You can see the hammer mics, um, the player mic, and where everything's uh, basically located. And they're labeled all down there so that you can see them. For more details, take a look at the manual. I'll tell you what each of these mics are. Uh, moving down into the settings, uh, this is the same as on the settings page. It's just set out on the main page here. There's a few extra things on the settings page. Uh, touch response is going to, let's just give you an example. So when I play the piano with my squeaky chair, we are going to get, and uh, this is the difference between the loudest and softest velocity. So this, I'll try and play G very softly here. You can barely hear it right. And then if I move into some of the velocities now, this is going to sound terrible. You should never do this. Even though we've put the settings, it'll say 0%, which means that even when I hit the softest note, you can hear all the noise in the background. Uh, this is just because it's the lowest uh, velocity and what we really want to do is set this anything above 50 percent so then what this means is that when i try and play that note again and i play it softly that's about as soft as we're going to get on that velocity but when you play loudly you're not getting a big difference in volume but if i put this at 100 percent, what you're going to get is here's a soft barely barely anything and then when I hit louder then you can get that sound so I'm going to turn this down uh, we by default put this around I think 88 between 83 and 88 so if we go around yeah, 78 percent what we're gonna get is here's a soft it's essentially your dynamic range the higher it is the more dynamic range meaning the difference between the soft and louds so i'm going to put this back to something reasonable 88 and let's see okay sounds good uh, next we're moving on to sympathetic resonance sympathetic resonance is in this case uh, not sampled but it is it would be next to impossible to sample we can write an article about that you can sample it but it, it takes a lot of work uh, we simulated it using scripting so i'm going to hold down a smell maybe i'll hold down a b flat uh, so holding down a b flat and then i'm going to play a couple other notes and then when i and i have to turn up my volume in order to hear this what it's going to do is it's going to ring out the resonance on these. And I'm just turning up the volume so I can hear it. There we go. And then I'm gonna turn up the volume on the sympathetic resonance way too loud. You can hear it. So right now. So, of course, that's way too loud for what we've got, but so you can hear it. So this is using a lot of voices. It's um, quickly climbing up the voice count, but if we take this down in volume, like where we preset it up, and then we go. And I just turn it up. And uh, let's see, we even have the some notes below adding to it. Uh, the nice part is, is that if you're, if you're doing a nice ballad, and I turn up the resonance, here, you know, this will be too much. Yeah. So I've let go of the notes, and then as soon as I let down, let go of the lowest note, and all that sympathetic resonance goes away. So uh, essentially we've got uh, fourths, fifths, octaves, uh, thirds, and so on as you'd naturally hear in the piano, but we've skipped a uh, few of the upper harmonics just so that we reduce the voice count. For example, if I um, hold down a G and just do a glissando, 
what we're getting across here in the voice count was 112. You can see we're up to 14 voices or so, when really we should only be at two voices there. Um, but it's a sympathetic resonance that's adding each of those. So you can turn that off as soon as you turn that off, and I do the same thing. And then it goes back down. You'll see once the voice count goes down, you're going to see it down to two. So two voices instead of what we had before. And uh, let's go to key up. Now, key up is the mechanical noise. The mechanical noise when you press down on the key and you let up. So then usually this is with the pedal down. And then if I um, add the key up, this will be way too loud. So you can hear that let up sound and that's of course five or six decibels above what is recorded at. So those key up sounds can, let's see if I can get them a little louder so you can hear them. Uh, give you some realistic piano sounds when they're nicely blended in. And just like all things on Concert Grand and Production Grand too, uh, you have to adjust these to your taste and what uh, your relative distance to the piano and so on. So you wouldn't expect a room mic to pick up that much key up if you're emphasizing the room mic, which we aren't in this case. This is a hammer and player. Um, but if we were to go into the room, you'd probably want to adjust this accordingly, right? So let's do some, some more of the room just the key up. You hear that there's a little bit of noise that's associated with those. So add to add some realism to it. I'm going to turn that off. So usually when you have sympathetic resonance and key up off, you're going to save some voices. If you have a dense mix, you're likely going to turn them off. Our release volume, I have this set a little bit louder than what the average user likes but I just like hearing it in what's a more of a natural state. Let's see what we are at, minus 25. So this is gonna be uh, at least twice as loud. And you can hear. It's way too loud. Right, so you can adjust the volume of these in order to get a nice blend. So if we bring this back down uh, to a reasonable level on the release, it blends nicely. Here's with it off. It might uh, purge the memory, I'm not quite sure, but here's with it off. So some people might prefer in a busy mix to turn off the releases, so then this is with it uh, releases off. Okay, and then if we turn them back on, you're gonna see they're loading into memory. And then here, with them off. I can even uh, put no volume. And here, ringing out in the piano, giving you that realistic sound. Next is pedal noise. I'm gonna leave the releases on. They should be on in all the presets. So now pedal noises, and pedal noises, uh, work on distance as well. The closer you are with the microphone perspective, the more likely you're gonna hear the pedal noise. And they are quite noisy, hence pedal noise, right? And these are in a round robin. And there's also a little trick on these as well, shown in the manual. If you switch the mod wheel down here or on any controller, you're gonna get that extra loud as soon as you have the mod wheel up. But if you don't, then you're gonna get softer pedal noises. And the reason for that is sometimes you're playing heavier rock styles and you're really slamming that pedal. Other times you're doing soft 
um, ballads or you're doing something that doesn't you don't really want to em emphasize the pedal noise but you still have it in there so that's when you'd um, adjust this to get either your loud or your softs and i believe there's three round robins uh, on the louds and seven on the softs uh, i anticipate that most people will just use it on the preset as softs continuing on if we look at authentic pedal Authentic pedal is more of an experimental thing. Um, I would recommend even turning it off and leaving it off. Uh, the idea behind it was to create a system where if I play something without the pedal, so like an A minor chord, and then hold down the pedal, what it should do, depending on the energy that's left in the piano and how quickly you're pushing down that pedal, cause some resonance to happen in the rest of the strings. So originally the idea when we we're looking at production grand 2 and concert grand here was that we would add this so if i you can hear that it's kind of cut off at the moment and i have to adjust those settings in order to get that to work um, experimental but in some playing styles when we get this to work well it um it really makes a big difference I um, pardon me moving on to continuous pedal continuous pedal here what it does is it allows you to have the pedal to catch pedaling and half pedaling and so on. So I, have, I haven't I have adjusted my pedal, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go about half. You can, you can hear that the sustain is different. And then if I go all the way down on the pedal, and then if I let up a little bit, you can hear that it's getting the pedal according to where the position is. Now, I can also press a chord, let's just do, and then catch it by releasing the key, and then, let's see if I can do that better. You can hear, and let's try this. Each time I let up on the pedal, it's going to catch um, just a portion of that. And it's, it's heavily weighted towards the lower end as on a actual grand piano. So those are the settings on the main page. Oh, wow, this video is getting long, so maybe we should break it up here. But uh, the next one is just the reverb settings and the microphones uh, settings on each of these.